One of the reasons that I'm so passionate about physical activity for mental health is based on my own experience. I was not a sporty child. I was always the last kid to be picked on the team at school PE, and I wasn't very keen on competition. And then during my adolescence, which was probably around 14 or 15, I began to go walking with my mother before school of the morning. I found that when I started my day with a walk, it seemed to help the rest of my day go better. I was better able to handle the stresses and strains of life as an adolescent. I then progressed to jogging and took up aerobics as part of school PE. I found these types of physical activity to be enjoyable, challenging and confidence boosting. From that time onwards, I have maintained regular participation in physical activity. And what has kept me going with it is the positive effect that I know that it has on my own mental health and well-being. I want everyone to have the skills, ability and opportunity to also engage in physical activity and to experience these benefits. Unfortunately, many Australians, particularly those who experience disadvantage, participate in very little physical activity and this is affecting their mental health and well-being. At Victoria University, we think that now is a time to take action to promote physical activity in our workplaces and our communities. And we need your help to do this. So let's talk about mental health. The World Health Organization defines mental health as a state of well-being in which every individual has an opportunity to fulfill his or her full potential. When someone has a condition that affects their mental health, they may have a mental illness. And this includes conditions like depression and anxiety. Many Australians experience mental illness. National survey data show that almost half of Australians will experience a mental illness at some stage in their life. So this means that most of us here will either have experienced a mental illness ourselves or we will have had a friend or family member who has experienced a mental illness and will therefore understand the devastating effect that mental illness can have on our relationships with others, our ability to work and our well-being. It is concerning that the prevalence and burden of mental illness is not spread equally in the Australian population. People who experience disadvantage, which is typically defined as those with low levels of education, low income, or living in disadvantaged areas, typically have poorer mental health outcomes than those who are more affluent. These differences are unfair and they're avoidable and they need to be addressed. The mental health of the Australian workforce is a major concern for the Australian business community. Did you know that mental health conditions cost Australian businesses at least $10.9 billion every year? And these costs are incurred when people who are unwell are unable to come into work, or when people who are unwell still come into work but aren't as effective or efficient as they could be if they were fully healthy. So mentally healthy employees are an asset to successful business endeavours. So what can we do to improve the mental health of our workplaces and our communities? Although we often look to the clinical health system for the answers on how to improve mental health, in many cases, the answers lay beyond the clinical health system. There is now strong evidence that physical activity reduces the risk of depression, reduces anxiety, improves cognition, and improves well-being. There is also evidence that regular physical activity helps people to become more resilient and better able to cope with stress. So although it is well recognised in the community that 
physical activity has a range of physical health benefits, for example, things like reduction in the risk of diabetes um, and stroke, it is perhaps less well recognised that physical activity is essential for good mental health. And so, in Australia and many other countries, we have a very big problem. Most people do not engage in enough physical activity. Furthermore, people who experience disadvantage are much less likely to engage in sufficient levels of physical activity compared with those who are more affluent. In fact, the richest Australians are one and a half times more likely to be sufficiently physical, physically active compared to those who experience the greatest disadvantage. At Victoria University, we want to increase participation in physical activity and reduce inequities in physical activity participation. And we need the help of the business community to do this. Business can play an important role in promoting physical activity to employees and in, within the workplace. However, the role of business should extend beyond the workplace and reach into the community. Business can play an important leadership role in creating, sustaining and supporting public-private partnerships and cross-sectoral collaborations that can promote physical activity. So, what can we do to improve physical activity in our workplaces and within our communities? In some cases, we have pretty good evidence of what we know works to increase physical activity. However, one thing that we need to get better at is translating evidence into practice. For example, we know that workplaces can promote physical activity to their employees and that workplaces can facilitate physical activity through things like flexible work hours and realistic workloads. Unfortunately, workplaces are often a barrier to their employees' participation in physical activity due to things like long work hours, inflexible work hours, and an unsupportive work-life balance culture. We also know that people who are disadvantaged face additional barriers to participating in physical activity. And yet, most programs and policies are universal in nature and therefore do not account for the additional needs of disadvantaged groups. We also know that if we want people to walk and cycle more, then they need destinations within walking or cycling distance and safe infrastructure on which to walk and cycle. And yet, how much money is spent each year on roads compared to pedestrian infrastructure? You may even reflect on your own neighbourhood. How safe do you feel walking or cycling to get to places? And would something like cycling to work even be a realistic choice for you? You'll see here the picture on the left is of Melbourne. In Australia, only 1.1% that's 1.1% of trips are made to work by bicycle. This rate is far lower than some European nations, such as the Netherlands, where around one quarter of trips to work are made by bicycle. To get better at translating evidence into practice, we need to partner researchers with business, government, and community groups. Victoria University has a strong record of external engagement and research translation. An example of this is the growing Brimbank program, which is a formal partnership between Victoria University and Brimbank City Council. One of the aims of the growing Brimbank program is to demonstrate what works 
to improve physical activity in disadvantaged communities, who, as I've already mentioned, typically have lower levels of physical activity and higher levels of poor mental health than more affluent communities. Along with getting better at translating evidence into practice, there is still a lot more research that we need to do to help us to better understand participation in physical activity that will inform the design of the most effective programs and policies to increase physical activity. In the Institute for Health and Sport at Victoria University, we are conducting a number of research projects to do just that. For example, we are surveying participants of this year's Mother's Day Classic to find out whether and how participation in these types of events leads to ongoing participation in physical activity. I'm sure most of you here are aware of the Mother's Day Classic and some of you may have participated in this event. We will use the findings of this research to inform the development of event management strategies that maximise the potential of events like the Mother's Day Classic to improve the public's participation in physical activity. Victoria University is also partnering with Belgravia Leisure to examine the factors that influence older adults' participation in physical activity in aquatic and recreation centres. We will use the findings of this research to inform the development of evidence-based strategies, programs and policies to increase participation in physical activity of older adults within these aquatic and recreation centres. Victoria University would love to partner with you on research projects to develop and test strategies, programs and policies to increase physical activity of your employees and communities. We would also love to partner with you to translate evidence of what we know works to improve physical activity into policy and practice. Finally, the importance of reducing inequities in physical activity and mental health outcomes cannot be overstated. These differences are unfair and avoidable. From the data, it is evident that there is an urgent need to focus on how best to engage disadvantaged groups in physical activity. Policies and programs must be tailored to tackle the impact of disadvantage to improve the health of all Australians. Thank you. <laughs>